All right, next one. I think we'll, we'll finish with this one right here. 7x minus 3y equals 21. Different approach than we had to the last one, a little bit different approach, or maybe similar approach that we would do with the first one, but how are we going to graph that? Nina. You can come up with points for x and y. That are solutions to the equation, right? All right, so give me points. Uh, x equals 3. 3. And y equals negative 7. What did that work? No, no, what did it? Wait a minute. Think about, what 14. You, think about what you have there. What is 3 times 7? 3 times 7 is 21. Which is what we want. Right. So what do we do with this here in order to make that work? What do we need the y value to be? Well, we could change 7x, the x for, we could change x to 6. Okay, you want to change it to 6? Yeah. Okay. And then make y. Because now we have what? When we have 7 times 6, we have? We have 42. 42. And then you can make negative 7 for y. And that would be able to, no, just 7 for y. Just 7. Very just good. Seven. You got there. Yep. All right, so now we have 42 minus 3 times 7, so that's 21. 42 minus 21 is 21. Does that work? I think she made it more complicated, though. Did she make it more complicated? Melissa, what do you think? What would you have done? Um, I would have made x 3 and made y 0. Right there. Because we already had our 21. Make this 0, we have 21 equals 21. That's a solution. OK, but if that works, there's also what else? What else would work here? with the same idea, because that's an intercept, right? Will? Uh, x equaling uh, 0 and y equaling negative 7. Negative 7. There we go. Do we see that now? So that method of using intercepts, all right, Nina, nice job with that. But I think it was, you made it more complicated, but it still works, doesn't it? It's one of our points.